Welcome to the SEI Podcast Series, a production of the Carnegie Mellon University Software Engineering Institute. The SEI is a federally funded research and development center sponsored by the U.S. Department of Defense. A transcript of today's podcast is posted on the SEI website at sei.cmu.edu slash podcasts. Welcome to the SEI's podcast series, a production of the Carnegie Mellon University Software Engineering Institute. My name is Palma Buttles Valdez, and I am the director of the SEI's Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Joining me today is Violet Turi, a software developer and researcher in the SEI's Artificial Intelligence Division. Today, we are here to talk about Violet's experiences and work in artificial intelligence and the importance of diversity in this field. Welcome, Violet. Thank you. It's great to be here. You've been a guest on our podcast series before to talk about your work in explainable artificial intelligence. Let's begin by having you tell our audience about yourself and the work that you do here, and also include what to you is the best part of your job at the SCI. Yeah, so um, I'm a software developer and researcher here in the AI division. I've been working here for about three and a half years. Um, so yeah, I've, I've shared about explainable AI research we're working on in the past. Um, currently, I'm leading a project that's looking at how we can improve the transparency of real world AI systems, especially in the computer vision space. Um, so that's been that's been the work I've been doing most recently. Um, but I've also gotten the chance to work on testing and evaluation projects and other kinds of responsible AI work. Um, I think the best parts of this job, I, I get to work with some really awesome people with a lot of different kinds of skill sets who are enthusiastic. Um, so that's just great having that kind of environment and, and having people like that on, on my team. Um, and then another thing I really like about working at the SCI is being able to investigate questions that I think are interesting and that matter to me, um, taking on challenging problems. Um, so yeah, it's a very supportive and uh, enthusiastic environment. So before we dig deeper on the importance of diversity in artificial intelligence, I'd like to talk about your early years. Who were your early mentors and what specific actions did they take to build you up and inspire you to pursue a career in computer science uh, or more recently in AI? So when did you visualize yourself as being a computer scientist or working in AI? Yeah, so I think my my parents have definitely been uh, good mentors to me along the whole way and like countless teachers that have been really supportive. Um, my mom was a software engineer for a number of years. And so hearing her talk about her experiences and the things she liked about that work, um, namely getting to work on interesting problems and kind of solving these little puzzles that, that come up when you're coding. Um, I thought that sounded really interesting and it sparked my interest. Um, also early on in high school, I took a course at Pitt that was just an intro to CS class. And I think once I had done that, I started really seeing myself um, in this career and feeling like, okay, this is something I can do that, that could be really interesting. Um, as far as AI goes, I, I didn't really know much about AI until I was probably a junior in college. And I got to take a class that was about the foundations of artificial intelligence. And I also got to take a class about computer vision as well. But I think when I really started to um, become interested in AI more seriously was I worked on a research project um, in the Human Computer Interaction Institute one summer, the summer of my junior year. Um, and the, pro the project was really about um, using AI as design material. So thinking about how we build effective systems using AI, how it can enhance the user's experience. And so that really exposed me to kind of all the opportunities related to AI, but also how new this area is and how many open questions there are. And so once I learned more about the domain, I, it, it really sparked my interest and I felt like it was something I wanted to dig into deeper. So you've touched a little bit on the question I was going to ask you about, you know, do you know when you wanted to pursue a career in computer science? Um, was there like a that light bulb moment for you? Was it during your classes? Um, something that just clicked and said, this is what I want to do as a career. I'm not sure if there was an exact moment where I, I felt that way, but I think the more I did it, the more comfortable I got with the material, the more I felt confident and like I was enjoying it. Because I think it, it can be a little nerve wracking at first when you're trying to learn a coding language and you don't have experience with it. But I think over time, my interest grew. Um, there also, there was a course that I took in college. It was an algorithms course and, um, both the professor and this kind of newer professor who were teaching the class were women. And 
I think just having them as sort of the leaders for the course um, really made me feel comfortable. And I remember, I remember really engaging with that material in a big way, more than I had in previous classes. Um, and also, a lot of the previous courses I took had been looking at um, the topic of computer science from a very mathematical way. But mm -hmm. in the algorithms class, it's really they give you a specific problem. You can kind of imagine the whole scene and then you're kind of entering that scene and figuring out the solution. I think that was another aspect of that course that made me realize here's what I'm doing in these classes, but here's how it could actually affect a real world problem. And I think actually reflecting on it, I think that might've been the moment when I thought, okay, I could, I could really do this. It could be really interesting to see how I can take these skills I've been growing and apply them to real world problems. So it's interesting that you mentioned that you, your mother was a role model and encouraged you to pursue this. And then you had teachers that were women as well. Oftentimes, it, they, research shows that when other women, students who are women, see women teaching or professors, that it does allow them to visualize themselves as a computer scientist or someone working in AI. Would you say that it, that experience did help to say, I could do this as well? Yeah, definitely. I think having women mentors was super helpful and it helped me envision my future and made me enthusiastic about this. Um, yeah, I think that opened a lot of a lot of doors for me. Also, as I studied computer science, I built up this really nice friend group of other women who were studying computer science and I got to work closely with them on projects or studying. And I think that also helped me feel really comfortable. And um, I felt like we were all kind of on this journey together and it, it was really cool. And now you can serve as a role model for women that are going to be pursuing this as well. So it's kind of coming around full circle as well. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about um, something of diving into diversity. So early in 2023, a black woman who was eight months pregnant in Detroit was falsely arrested for carjacking by police who had used facial recognition technology. At the time of her arrest, she was the sixth such person to be falsely identified by the AI system. All six people had been black. There has been less catastrophic harm caused by bias in AI systems. Reuters reported that Amazon discontinued an AI system it was using to review job applicants after learning it downgraded female applicants. So all of this kind of leans towards having AI have some little bias in, in, in the system. So why do you think diversity is so important in the field of AI than, and knowing what some of these examples we just shared? So when you're working with AI systems, there are a lot of places where bias can enter the system. And I think sometimes from the very design of the system itself, there can be some issues there. So you really need to think about kind of what the best case and worst case scenarios are for the system. So in the case of using facial recognition technology, or having AI help process resumes, you could say it might improve the efficiency of the process or the accuracy, you might be able to cut costs in some way. So those are all benefits. But there's also a lot of risks that are it's important to dive into. So what what happens if bias seeps into one of those systems, or if you're using historical data to train your models, how are you going to ensure that there aren't biases um, within that data set that will be perpetuated by the system that you build? Um, and then furthermore, um, even when you have a trained model, there, there are trade-offs that can take place. There are metrics that you need to track to make sure that it's going to work for diverse um, end users or on diverse kinds of data. So I think AI systems, with all technology, there's the possibility that the system could work better for some groups than others. But with AI, it's, it can be a really volatile kind of situation. And if, if something goes wrong from system design to the data set collection to the performance metrics, you can you can miss things and you can you can have issues basically where you have bias baked in in a big way and the AI learns that behavior. So it's really important that you have people who are cognizant of these biases and can be advocates kind of to to make sure that this is something we're all thinking about and we're all working on as we build the system. Um, so long story short, I think diversity is extremely important in, in building AI systems because you need to have diverse stakeholders be part of this process. And I think it really helps when you have people of different backgrounds kind of have a stake in that and, and a seat at the table so that um, we make sure that these concerns or considerations are not things that we think about at the end, but 
that um, you have people talking about all the way through. And obviously, you don't have to be from an under uh, a background that's underrepresented in STEM to think about how the system's going to work for diverse stakeholders. But I think it can be really helpful to have people with different lived experiences there um, to voice those concerns and, and to be cognizant of, of ways that AI can either serve or harm people. So in your opinion, how can we address the lack of diversity in the field of AI? Yeah, I think... Um, a couple. I have a couple of thoughts. <laughs> I think it's a challenge, uh, a challenging topic, um, just because the, there there are ongoing issues with diversity or lack of diversity in STEM, and so it can be hard. It can be cyclical. Um, my thought what, from personal experience: one is that I think it's really important to build spaces for groups that are underrepresented in STEM where they feel comfortable and they feel capable. So for me. As we discussed, I had um, these awesome women mentors that really made me feel like I could see myself doing this career. Um, and so I think that's just really essential is helping people connect with those mentors and see examples of people who are like them um, approaching these kinds of problems. Um, another thing is I have read before that women sometimes tend towards jobs where they feel like they're having a positive impact. And I know that's something I felt as well. Um, I think sometimes when you're working on a, an AI problem or a computer science problem, you might be kind of tackling a really small part of a larger system. So it can be hard to tell how what you're working on ultimately has a, an impact. Um, so I think a, a couple ideas there. One is to get involved with projects where possible that you're interested in, where you feel like you're building systems that matter to you. Um, but another thing I think that I felt is just kind of reframing this a bit and thinking about how just kind of by being a, a woman in STEM, you're potentially opening doors for other people. You're showing them kind of what sort of futures they could have. Um, so just, just, yeah, in, in two, two regards, you can kind of make the work more positive or have a positive impact. One is finding projects that matter to you. And the other is just thinking about your impact as, as a member of an underrepresented group in STEM and ways you can connect uh, and, and kind of grow other people as well. Great. So in your work, you focus on responsible, trustworthy, and explainable AI. Can you talk about your work through the lens of diversity? So responsible AI kind of broadly is looking at how we can build out best practices for engineers and designers so that they can build systems that um, serve people basically from the ground up, um, keeping paying attention to issues like data privacy, thinking about how systems will work for diverse stakeholders, et cetera. Um, so it definitely it has a clear, clear implications um, for how well systems will work for diverse groups. If you, there's that expression garbage in, garbage out. So if you're not working with quality data on quality systems, you're not gonna build things that are, are high quality for people. Um, but then more specifically with transparency work, so. A lot of AI models, especially ones that that um, can mimic human performance in some way, like computer vision models or large language models, um, they, these tend to be deep learning architectures. And so it's really hard to say what's going on kind of under the hood with these systems. And so there are a lot of risks that you um, encounter as a result where you know how the how the AI performs on certain inputs and, and what outputs are, are produced, but you don't understand how it actually made those decisions. So um, related to the topic of diversity, it's really important to thoroughly vet systems and make sure that there isn't a biased reason why it it's reaching these outputs. So, so this work is really kind of a way to counter those issues um, that we face when we're using data sets that contain bias. And it gives us a lot more information about what's going on with the model so that we can make sure we're training models that actually behave as, as intended for diverse groups. Great. So Violet, you work at the SEI, which is a federally funded research and development center. What drew you to work within the SEI and at an FFRDC? Yeah. So throughout college, I had worked on different research projects at CMU and I really liked that experience of getting to kind of learn about problems, read past work, think about new ways to approach the, those challenges. Um, so I thought it was a really exciting opportunity to continue doing that kind of work. And then also, I think it's it's been really interesting and exciting working um, on projects that have impact for the federal government because um, it's a great way. It's it's a great way to give back. It's a great way to learn. 
Um, I feel like the landscape of AI, for example, is shifting so rapidly and there's so many opportunities um, for for the government to think about AI, to use AI, develop regulation, et cetera. Um, so it's a great place also to be doing responsible AI work. Um, so yeah, I think, I think both the ability to do research and then also to work on interesting problems um, that are high impact, that impact the government is, is really exciting um, and drew me to work at an FFRDC. Well, we're glad you're, you chose the SCI. So Violet, thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. Um, we will include links in the transcript to resources mentioned during this podcast, as well as links to your work. Finally, a reminder to our audience that our podcasts are available every place you download podcasts, as well as the SEI's YouTube channel. If you like what you see and hear today, please give us a thumbs up. Violet, thank you again for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for joining us. This episode is available where you download podcasts, including SoundCloud, TuneIn Radio, and Apple Podcasts. It is also available on the SEI website at sei.cmu.edu slash podcasts and the SEI's YouTube channel. This copyrighted work is made available through the Software Engineering Institute, a federally funded research and development center sponsored by the U.S. Department of Defense. For more information about the SEI and this work, please visit www.sei.cmu.edu. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email us at info at sei.cmu.edu. Thank you.